welcome here to a fantastic day of high school action here with esports of course all over the place we are here with play versus spring high school championship and i'm excited to be here myself and my co-caster as well we're very excited to get with some splatoon 3 action to start my name is orbital with me is of course drf drf how you doing today I'm doing absolutely fantastic, excited to see this upcoming generation of Splatoon gamers take on the Georgia High School Championship here in Splatoon 3. I'm very, very excited as well because not only do we have Splatoon 3, but we also have a myriad of other matches to be played later on. To give you a little bit of an idea, right now we are on YouTube here, and of course you have Rocket League A through 4A coming up here shortly. Afterwards, we also have Madden NFL 24, and then we have NBA 2K24, and then of course Rocket League 5A through 7A later on throughout the day all here. And then on the Twitch side of things, there's even more action to be had there. So if you have multiple screens and multiple monitors, go ahead and check all of those out and watch throughout the entirety of this day but that's not why you're here right now it is splatoon 3 and i'm excited it's a best of five a matchup here for the play versus high school spring 2024 georgia gh ghsa finals and i think that's very very exciting best of five here in front of us could be very quick or it could be a long one yeah it certainly can you know with splatoon 3 it is such a fast paced game five minutes the average uh, game length so it like i said it, it can go a couple of different ways uh, especially with how the the modes are sort of laid out here we're gonna actually be starting with turf war which is three minutes pure and simple get as much ink on the ground as possible to win just outpaint your opponents uh over the span of three minutes uh and whoever has the most uh percentage on that on the ground is going to end up winning and that will kind of set the tone for the rest of this set and for me, that's pretty nice because I'm a very simple man. I see ground, I paint ground, and that's it. I don't have to worry about too much except someone else shooting me. You know, that's the thing. But uh, that also brings about a very fundamental piece of this, which is you do have to have pretty good coordination with your teammates, I think, and a very nice set of equipment loadouts as we do have Brookwood High School going up against FCS Innovation Academy, which uh, Brookwood High School is going to be the paint eaters, and, of course, FCS Innovation Academy. Scrungle Bungles, great names, by the way, hilarious to me at least. But when it comes to this, it does feel with the myriad and the uh, uh, variety of options that you have with regards to the weaponry, Turf Wars is like by far the most simple, but also can bring some of the most variety depending on the strategies you wish to employ. Oh, absolutely. With Turf War, this is your opportunity to bring out a lot of the weapons that you don't get to play in other modes. So <laughs> whether it's like an arrow spray uh, or a sploosh, whatever it may be, whatever your choice of high inking power is, that's the name of the game. So that's what these teams are going to be focused on as uh, we look at towards the, the map selection as well. Um, from at least what we're hearing initially, it is going to be Mincemeat Metalworks, which is quite the pick. I, I, I don't know who made the call, but I am a big fan. Mincemeat Metalworks, definitely not the the biggest, um, does not get the most support, I should say, uh, <laughs> from the general Splatoon community, but I am personally a big fan of this map, and uh, you know what? These are my favorite students. <laughs> you do that and we are representing like one hundredth of the population of Splatoon players right now. I believe you said it best. It is not very well liked. It is one that people really dislike and I think that might just be with the different pieces uh you know of that circumference you can see here pretty straightforward just go ahead take a look at the one thing at the top you can see a fast variety we have I think across the entire board as we're underway. Yeah and a couple of things that are standing out here already is this Yeah, get the heck out of there to stay safe. 
Yeah, they do have to really push some of that. And for this map, that great there is the only way to really get into your opponent's base. So the fact that they were able to leverage that hammer to get up into their flat, uh, that is already, you know, spelling disaster here. Um, as so far, this purple team, excellent job of commanding mid, but it's a little bit of back and forth. We've only seen danger come up once or twice so far, so it's pretty even as we pass that halfway mark in this game. And it is going to be Brookwood in that purple. They're going to be trying their best to, to try and take over here. But right now, it is going to be a challenge back. He has going to give it their best shot here. It's Bungle Bungle trying to get a little bit more in front. But as you see, it's a little bit too difficult. Right now, we can't really tell exactly who is in the lead. But so far, the territory is a little bit questionable. One minute left here in this game. Number one, best of five. It's just very calm and collected here before trying to push their way forward once again. Absolutely. Did see a bit of that danger zone there from Brookwood as they do lose Ooh. two members here. And as we start to approach the last 30 seconds, the most critical uh, section of Turf War. As folks like to say, everything happens in the last 30 seconds. All the reflux oh. almost getting a nice pick there. The hammer going to come out as well and not going to be able to find the pick. All oh, disaster for paint eaters. As we approach the last 20 seconds here, they have a massive comeback to make. Oh, this hurts. That was a big attempt. It was a gamble move, and unfortunately, they're losing out here. This is going to be a large one. Nice eliminations on either side. One apiece, and those timers are taking a little bit longer. However, I do think it is going to be strong goal of Bungles to go ahead and get a larger portion to again eliminate, but this time on the other side, and I'm not exactly sure who came out on top. We'll have to go to that scoreboard to see. Eliminations came out on both ends. Well, game one done turf wars it looks pretty dang close who gets it it is gonna be the side of scrungle mongols but much closer than i thought it was gonna be yeah we saw that danger come up uh, approximately like 10 seconds left in the game <laughs> yeah. so it did seem pretty evident that scrungle bungles was going to run away with that but credit to the paint eaters they did an excellent job getting about two three picks there right at the end to make it interesting but it was just too little too late and that's going to be the difficult part we mentioned turf wars doesn't really have i I don't want to say too much macro or too much of a strategic value. It's literally just run and go. Your strategic value is really who do you want to allocate to the sides to try and cover that paint aisle instead of going to the head to head value. You can see at the beginning about 30 seconds, of course, the normal cover your base, go ahead and get kind of that base set up and back. But then afterwards, it's who are you going to aggress on? And you can see it there. It did feel like paint eaters took that last leap in the last minute or so. And it's just they shouldn't be too upset. I think about that loss they went for a big play it didn't pay out i'm sure you'll have another chance here in games two three possibly four and five certainly and the nice part about this as well is this is map counter picking so the team that loses does get their free choice of what map they get to play the mode is set so uh, I believe the next mode is going to be Rainmaker. Uh, so they will have to pick what map they think will complement them best or you know counter the uh the different weapons that we've seen from uh scrungle bungle however like we said with turf war that's usually the time that folks bring out slightly different weapon choices those refluxes certainly not coming back in the future games oh. if i had to take a guess <laughs> but um you know if you have an idea of what these teams have been playing you can certainly keep that in mind during your selection Mm -hmm. And that's how you uh, you really keep focus in this match itself. Rainmaker, I think, brings out a lot of that offense defense type. Uh, you do want to kind of cover your own area, especially with that Rainmaker. You want to ensure that you have good control over it. We've seen people even uh, drop value on the Rainmaker. You go ahead and say, hey, we'll go ahead and hold Ooh. out. We'll wait for a little bit. You have proper timings as well. So I want to see both these teams be able to utilize that as much as possible here. We got into a little bit of a factory setting. Oh, yes, this is Mako Mart, uh, one of the most popular maps in all of Splatoon. Rainmaker, though, the least popular mode for this map, as very <laughs> quickly here, it's Brookhorse, uh, sorry, uh, Brookwood, uh, that is 
picking up that Rainmaker and almost clearing the checkpoint. Didn't even get a chance to talk about weapons here as they had gotten two picks off of that pop. Uh, but real quick, take a look at what these teams have brought out. That trying to vote, the first thing that pops up as that is my personal mate as well. So big fan here. And it's going to do an excellent job of painting over a lot of these ledges. Um, meanwhile, it seems like on the side of Scrungle Bungles, it's only that pencil being swapped out for that range blaster another great choice here to just pick around these ledges i think right now we are seeing a little bit of a struggle here as it is going to be teal to have a little bit of uh, difficulty they've actually been sectioned on the defense so far right here you can see they have not moved that marker and that's going to be a nice little illumination there well pop going to try and cover on that rainmaker can you pick it up as quickly as possible though that's going to be the big question there we go it is covered and it is going to be uh, for a house to go ahead and grab their best how much are they actually going to get so that is the question if they are eliminated quickly that's going to be the difference here it looks like they're actually getting a lot of value out this time yeah they certainly are as it, the rainmaker just kind of being stalled right now they're taking it way left a uh, little bit of a unconventional movement here for the rainmaker as they are trying to find something to enable them to start to work back towards this checkpoint and no the rainmaker goes down it's just the nautilus left standing here and they're going to go ahead and try to take position up on this left stack in order to get some jumps in their team able to do so now and this rainmaker continues to be played in a very awkward position but the nautilus with a nice double oh man almost a wipe no worries there it is wipe out total and that's one that they want the lead is handed over this time in bright colors as well checkpoint covered and completed and it is going to be that handle that red we're more than happy about right now and, and again i have to give a lot of credit over to the side of uh, Brook, uh brookwood they are playing this exceptionally well i think they are again maybe it's a little bit awkward sighting but they've had firm control of that rainmaker it's just taking them a little bit longer to actually maneuver which honestly going a little bit slow and methodical might not be too bad Absolutely, as Magic once again playing hero here, coming up with a big play to progress that Rainmaker to that 19 point remaining mark. Finally, Scrungle Bungles. No! I'm, I'm really saying that. I was gonna say Scrungle Bungles getting a bit of relief here, but it's the Tri Slosher that picks up a double themselves, and Pain Eaters coming up with big play after big play, and they are not letting up here. Oh man, this is a fight for the ages. <gasps> Wait, minute 50 so left. Oh man, this is getting so, so overwhelming right now. It does feel like the big eaters are in firm control here. Just five remaining right now. And all they have to do, they, they could play for time, quite honestly. You could just sit there and go, hey, we don't have to do too much. But no, you want that dub. You want that win. Let's see if they can pull it out. Absolutely a minute and a half to play. Five points remaining for the paint eaters. It's going to be very difficult to overcome that uh, or to continue to add points to the board. So like you said, Orbital, this is going to be a bit of a shift in mindset here to play a bit more defensively. And they do get the three down there. Uh, it's just going to be the splash that's making their way up and going to be forced to jump out there. So this will be a reset of the Rainmaker as Paint Eaters picks this one up and try to get it back to mid, uh, seeing if they could possibly add some points to the board. Again, yeah, a very tall task at this stage because that is typically a game-winning score here. Mm -hmm. And that maybe that, uh, you know, the earlier weird, awkward location of the Rainmakers, maybe we see that again. As the turret does come out, go ahead and get a little bit of mech units out, but you lost two of your teammates on the back end, so it doesn't really get as much value as you were hoping for right now, getting chased around the board and quickly splatted out. It is going to be the side of the Paint Eaters to more than happily get these eliminations continue to stall out. 30 seconds left, and the Rainmaker is dropped once again. I think this is it. We are going to a 1-1 score. This it's turning out to be a pretty dang good series. Yeah, so far, but with 12 seconds to go, it is Congo Bungles that are on their last push of this game. But they need to clear the checkpoint first, and the Nautilus oh, almost comes up with a big play there, but two members still go down on the side of Congo Bungles. And now overtime commences, 40 seconds on that Rainmaker timer, but they won't even get to use it as it gets shut down, and this set is tied at one game apiece. And you can kind of see why I think uh, this 
map, it's just, it doesn't feel great for the Rainmaker. It's just a little bit too hectic. And of course, the awkward placement of the Rainmaker just left it where it felt like the, I want to say early to mid section, the early to mid game felt very weird. It just turned into an all out, who can we lock out before we actually move and allocate most of our members over? And it did actually work in the paint eater's favor. We were wondering what exactly came out, but it's just like, they say, hey, don't worry about the Rainmaker right now. We'll get that eventually if we keep eliminating as many people as possible. Yeah, and they did such a great job. I mean, multiple players there coming up with massive doubles to really sense Grungle Bungles for spin there. And they, they spent most of that game just trying to recollect themselves and get them their footing back in the game because every single time they thought that they could finally pick up that Raymaker and try to reset it, get a little bit of map control back. There was one person somewhere hiding in a corner that would just pop out and be like boo and get two more picks and keep that rainmaker push going i love every single moment of it and honestly this is why i said paint eaters in game one i didn't want to i didn't want them to be affected as much it really felt game one felt like it was really their own undoing they just went for a little bit of a scramble maybe they felt a little bit forced so they wanted to test out in game one how far they could push the limits game two felt a lot more under their control and as we head over to the splat zones this is going to be another interesting one a little bit more sectioning and allocation of your members have to really keep eyes on what goes on and uh, the map of course will be a little bit different i i really do hope to see a, a little bit different instead of going back maybe to the Mart or such. <laughs> well, Mako Mart Splat Zones is an instant classic there, uh, but I do think that these teams, given what they've picked so far, uh, I anticipate that we're going to continue to see some variation as word coming in that this will be Robo Ramen as the map choice here from uh, Scrungle Bungle. And this is one of the newer maps to the game. Uh, and Splat Zones has been a very popular choice early on in this map's life. And I enjoy it because, man, I get hungry sometimes. And I'm going <laughs> to eat a couple of noodles here. It's going to be a good sign. But for Splat Zones, I, I want to say this is going to favor the side of Paint Eaters again. But when it comes down to it, I love the fact that also we did see a very, I want to say, stalwart defensive tactics being tried by the side of Scrungle Bungles and that may even turn in their favor so let's see what they can throw down here they're going to give it their best shot as we get underway it is going to be a Brookwood in that blue and of course in that orange it is going to be the likes of this other squad it's going to be a good time let's get underway with a little bit of those pain zones yeah, and it doesn't seem like there's very many adjustments here. I believe it's just the Pain Eaters bringing out that shot that might not have been there in the last game, uh, being the only difference. Uh, so definitely just some pretty standard comps. They know what they like to play, and they're going to stick with it uh, regardless of the map and mode for the most part. So, uh, hey, I, I got to commend that. You play exactly what works best for you. And so Ooh, far wow. for Scrungle Bungle, it is paying off. It's an excessive lead right now, 40, and I understand it can turn on a dime, but it's unfiltered. Take a look at this. There is not a single denial tool. What is going on here? This is, this is a little bit out of control right now, I think. Yeah, and this Zuka needs to come out. I, I, I'm not sure what they're waiting for, holding on to it, because this, this zone is only down to 30 points remaining, and it's the crab that's going to get the shutdown, but the Zuka will find one more on their way out. This zone gets neutralized wow. and flipped. Oh, oh, wow. Backs against the wall early on, and Paint Eaters comes up big, claiming the zone, handing that hefty 63-point penalty orbital. I mean, that hurts, but at the same time, that took so long right now. For Brookwood, they need to get things under control, and they lost control already. This is what I was kind of worried about. Control handed back over to the likes of the Scrungle Bungles. And they're going to try and ship away at that penalty. Of course, already taken down. Remember how long they had that uh, They had that first control for? I honestly don't oh. think this 40 seconds left penalty is going to be that much of a worry for them. 
I don't think so either, especially with the blaster getting a two for one special. A big sale going on here at Robo Robin. Oh my goodness, and this penalty is going quickly. Paint Eaters oh. need to build up these specials right now if they stand a chance to flip the zone once more. And with two members going down, it is not looking good. NZAP on the side of Scrungle Bungles down as well. This Zuga needs to get popped right here, right now, if they stand a chance to paint this zone. The hammer coming in as well. They're behind two. Can they flip the zone? They get the two at one point remaining. Oh my goodness, what a play there. I congratulated the likes that Brookwood in game one went ham at the early start. They tried their hardest to fire away in kind of that gamble mode. This time around, they're forced into the gamble. They have to lay down all the chips at the end, and they have to go hard. That's almost a wipeout, but it is going to be coming back up for the side of Scungle Bungles. Right now, for Paint Eaters, though, they need firm control. They just ran out that penalty, and now they're going to try and fire back on the timer. They need to hold on for pretty much everything. I think we've seen how long the likes of Scrungle Bungles are able to hang on for their own, but this is going to be the hammer out. Control has been flipped, of course, and it feels like this could be the end. Oh, this is going to be a very interesting response here because Paint Eaters has been so patient every single time trying to get back to zone, almost too patient, mm -hmm. and has been on the verge of letting this game devolve into a knockout every single time. And this time, they don't have as much time to work with. They have to get to this zone a lot quicker than they may think. Only with ten. Rain going to be coming out now. And this is their opportunity to flip the zone once more. They get the neutral with one Ooh. penalty remaining. Oh, the Nautilus with two, the Nautilus with three, and one. Once more, Pay Eaters comes up clutch at the 11th hour. What is going on here, DRF? This feels illegal. They can't keep us on our toes like this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> they are fighting tooth and nail, and I love it. Every single moment, they do not give up. They say, we want this third game. We want to put ourselves on series point. We want this championship, but they lose control. And again, the, the absolute power that it feels. Uh, Scrungle Bungles has had FCS Innovation Academy, has played decently well. However, this turn, once again, is putting it in favor of the side of Brookwood High School. They're going to hang on. 20 seconds left. This could be the big point. Of course, oh. how much time is left? Control is lost. Stand it back over. Penalty might be running up. If they can cover it. There it is. Oh, a massive flip there by Scoggle Buggles. Both of these teams continue to come up big time after time. It has just been back and forth in this zone all game long, but Scoggle Bungles have been the only ones to hold a lead this entire game as we enter the final 20 seconds. Penalty quickly dissipating as now it's a 3v3 situation here. One last Ooh. effort from Spade oh. Eaters. They are not going to be able to flip the zone. They were so close i think just a couple more uh blots of paint there uh neutralize that zone once more but again paint eaters have been playing with fire all game long and finally it caught up with them there in the closing seconds and scrungle bungle takes their second game it was one of the crazier turns as well we mentioned that scrungle bungles feels like they do very well on the defensive pattern whenever they're the ones getting a decent amount of ground and they just kind of post up. It's uh, very different than what you normally see. I think it's what you and three normally you see very aggressive. You see trying to get those eliminations, which we did see paint eaters do. By the way, I would like to point out you were very much correct at the very end. They got two eliminations right at the end. If they had, what was it like half a second more? Maybe they could have taken over that zone. But that's the thing you mentioned it, Brookward. It felt like they had all the tools. They were not willing to expend those tools. And in that one, I would have liked to see the aggression from game one at the very end. Just send it. Go ham because you can't let the timer run that long. No, you can't. And it, they, like we said, they were patient. Just maybe a little bit too much patience, <laughs> uh, which is honestly, you know, we say patience is a virtue, uh, and it certainly is. But in this situation, you just had to send it. Uh, they, they held on to those specials maybe just a little bit too long. Uh, they were always looking for the right time to attack, and that worked time after time. But, you know, that adds up over time uh, to where that penalty is just not as big as it get uh, as, as you might be used to in the early parts of the game. Uh, so it's just they had to keep responding faster and faster and faster. Uh, and, you know, it just was not enough time for them to work with. Uh, because I think if they do flip that zone one more time, 
we see overtime, we see a possible oh, yeah. come from behind victory for the Paint Eaters. It, it was just a matter of seconds. I would actually say, I think Paint Eaters actually had better eliminations in that game. I, I would say they had better control. It's just, again, you get lost in the sauce a little bit and you say, hey, you know, we are so focused on getting these eliminations that that's what we want. So right now we are headed to tower control and this one I think is going to even favor Paint Eaters once again, a little bit more objective focus and a lot more obvious objective focus. You don't actually get really anything uh, out of eliminations. They set more pressure, but it, it feels a little bit more straightforward in this factor. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I will actually say that I uh, think Scrongle Bungles has the slight advantage here. And the reason Ooh. why is for that blaster. The blaster here is, if it makes its return, uh, I think is going to be so effective on managing the objective because it does such an excellent job of making it difficult to stay on the tower no matter what position you're in, especially bringing up the range blaster that gives you that extended range uh you know to be able to reach wherever uh you you're standing to get to that tower um so it's going to be constant pressure on the tower from scrungle bungles um so i'm i'm excited to see what they ultimately end up uh selecting here for their compositions uh how the map is going to end up playing a factor as well uh so given that any map is fair game um it's you know it's a little bit hard to anticipate you know for sure you know who's going to be favored because that's that's part of the selection process um mm. as paint eaters are the ones that get to pick here yeah and i uh i'm a personal fan of ship shape uh i will always say i enjoy the yes. ship shape. i love the open seas and it's one of my most enjoyable uh this is this is going to be fun i think for paint eaters you sit there and you go uh we we messed up again and at this and again it comes back to the fact that i no matter what weapons you bring out, I think paint eaters just, they do feel a little bit more, uh, a little bit better in those fights, in those kind of scrambles for those eliminations. I just want to see them have that aggression come out. Every single time we see them, it feels like they have to be under pressure at the very end to be like, oh, now we actually have to do something. You can't let it get to that point. But that is beside the point. I think I hit that one a little bit too hard on the head just multiple times. I want to know, DRF, is there a map that you are hoping to see come out right now? Ooh, you, you said ship shape. That's an excellent choice. Inkblot Art Academy is another like that's like that's like a final destination type. Uh, but it seems like we have the pick is in, uh, and we are going Ooh. back to Mako Mart. I think is what this is. So another good choice here, uh, as Mako Mart Tower Control can be a little bit snowbally. Uh, so definitely watch out as, if either of these teams progress past that second checkpoint things can start to spiral very quickly so it's going to be a little bit you know back and forth early on as folks try to navigate through that first checkpoint but you know hey time will tell on this one i mean they got five minutes on the clock let's see what they can throw down already a very quick take of that tower early on for vhs it is going to be a, a hard push over 87 remaining of course first push looking pretty okay but they need to get that tower down a quick push right back i love the double eliminations coming out here a very hard fight and slowing down even a chance at a pace so it is going to be the side of scrungle bungles to try and get some sort of vintage on themselves yeah and, and we do see a couple of uh mirror picks here uh, as well you know that is, and the shot uh, making their uh, appearance on both teams here so the, the zuka cooler combo it's a it's meta for a reason right now uh and <laughs> these teams are really leading into this as we do see scrungle bungles they will clear this first checkpoint with relative ease blaster putting in some work early on to clear these ledges here and now they're pushed up all the way on the plat allowing their team to progress to the second checkpoint oh easy time as well that's two in a row with almost no response here and you mentioned it a little bit snowball heavy if things are not contained eliminations come down but it is the side of vhs they're just like yo what the heck just happened it's a quick almost take that could have been checkpoint three but it is gonna be very slightly pushed back long way to go for vhs Oh, that 
that was massive. They did clear that third and final checkpoint, and they entered what I like to call the oh no zone, because as <laughs> soon as you clear that third checkpoint, games are usually over. So the fact mm -hmm. that Pain Eaters managed to get the defensive stop there is huge, because not many teams can pull that off at that late in a push. So, hey, they're still in the fight, and it is not over till it's over. We mentioned it. They're a team that loves playing under pressure. I don't know how much closer to pressure you can get. This is as close <laughs> as it is. It's ridiculous. And now they're going to fire back. A quick checkpoint one taken. If they can run as quickly as Strongo Bungles did, we should see a checkpoint two and three collected in this same push. Let's see if they can throw it down. No eliminations in the last about 10 seconds, which is kind of scary for both sides. There's the first one. A great stop and a second. Looking for a third if they can, but this is the opportunity to fire back. But it is right back in control. This is going to be a oh. bit messy here. This kind of roundabout corner that they're trying to go. Checkpoint two is reached. Yes, and it's going to be two down. Oh, oh we got a third down on the side of Skungle Bungles. This uh, Octo shot, I believe, I'm sorry, the splatter shot comes in from the top rope there and is able to shut down this tower push. A great stop there for the Skungle Bungles, giving themselves a little bit of relief here. And the Zuka comes oh. out with Massive picks here now for Skungle Bungles. This tower resets and they have two more specials on their side. Paint Eaters gonna have to come up with another big stop here to give themselves another pushing opportunity. And it's gotta be against those. It is gonna be a special launch number one. No one lets you come out, but enough to force them back. But they do take care of that tower. It's gonna be BHS in control, trying to shove back for 31. Eliminations on either side. That's two, double for double. Of course, they're still hanging on. Power push right back. Both teams fighting massively for this. We're down to a minute 20. So this is gonna be the big chance. Hard push still leading on. Strongle Bungles, I think, have firm control. Hammer comes out here to try and clear a little bit of path, but not really gonna happen. You are eliminated two on either side. But remember, that tower is still pushing. What is going on here? DRF very close to a wipeout on the teal side. It was a 1v1 there for a second. I, I think both players were on pretty opposite sides of the map, though. Uh, but everybody went down there. And now we enter in the final minute. Both teams scrambling to find position for this late game push or defensive hold. Uh, and so far, Skungle Bungle's getting the slight better end of it as they find a couple of massive picks here. They're trying to win a championship here. I think they got it, and of course, this mindset, 30 seconds left, you can go ahead and say, hey, go ahead, play defenses, just don't let them push far. They have a whole other checkpoint to get through. Hammer comes out, though, to try and stop a little bit of aggression, but no, they're taking out elimination. Stop. Deny that tool. What a play here. And we're watching as Tacos is trying to run their way to safety. That push is ongoing, 15 seconds left. You need to crest this point, but I don't think you're going to be able to do so. Tower is stopped. Tower is lost. Tower is under control. Control once again. VHS don't want it to end here. They're gonna try and hang on for dear life, but I think that's gonna be all they wrote. What a shot at the back end. Your championships here. Champions for the Georgia GHSA Splatoon 3 Finals is going to be FCS Innovation Academy. Wow, what an ending there. The GG trip strikes coming in to shut down that tower and ensure that Brick Ward did not get that last extended push. Oh man, what a game, what a set orbital. I loved every single moment of it. And it once again showed me the absolute power that an anime opening can have. Just the friendship wasn't too strong. <laughs> VHS, I don't think I've seen as many holds as I've seen them throw down in a single series. Uh, every single time, it felt like it would come down to the last 20 or 10 seconds, and they just send a Hail Mary or something of the sort. It just kind of gets tossed out there, whether it be that they needed to or they didn't need to, and it made things so entertaining in the end. It certainly did. Both of these teams fought tooth and nail. And even though it was only a four game series, there was a lot that I think we learned from these teams. Uh, just game after game, paint eaters. I have never, I've casted a lot of Splatoon matches. I have never seen a team that 
performs like they do with their backs against the wall almost willingly putting their backs against the wall <laughs> so that way they can just deliver and ultimately came up short on those last two games but it was very impressive to see what they were able to put together there on the uh on their various pushes so i i am quite impressed despite the second place finish but hey that's still fantastic after playing all season long to be on the podium with the silver medal they they have my respect and on that same vein though sometimes surprises can't happen but fcs innovation academy the scrungle bungle squad showed up here today congratulations to them it was some of the most stalwart defensive tactics i've seen if i equate it to anything it was like that wall that kept getting built closer and closer to your base it felt ever looming. There was almost no way to stop it. Well played mm. by FCS. I mean, if you got to take away anything, what do you think their main strength was for this champions? Ooh, that's a great question. Uh, I, I think that what they did so well was just continue to coordinate as a team. It seemed like those specials were coming out at such a great time. Every single opportunity that they had them ready, one or two specials, uh, they just back to back uh came out with the specials to continue to put on the pressure against the paint eaters and it just continued to pay dividends for them so excellent work there i loved every single moment of it congratulations once again to fcs innovation academy i want to give a shout out once again to all the players here that came out today i know they had a couple bench members as well just in case but they played a fantastic game thank you so much of course to tuning in to the georgia ghsa splatoon 3 championships that'll be it for this one however we have more matches coming up here i just want to make sure that we're on for the next it is going to be the ghsa a through 4a rocket league finals and that'll be a best of seven matchup and that'll start at the top of the hour so please don't go anywhere thank you so much for tuning in it has been orbital as well as drf on the mic here and we will see you all in just a bit